Hey there, live streamers. Today, we're diving into the world of live streaming methods, breaking down the three main ways that people are going live in 2024. Each method has its own advantages and disadvantages, and it's important to know if you're a beginner streamer, which way avoids the biggest headaches and helps you to ensure that your stream stays up and the client is happy. Method number one, and I must say this is the ideal method for reliability reasons, is using a hardware encoder. Picture this, a dedicated device solely focused focused on encoding your video and sending it out to your audience in real time. That's the beauty of hardware encoders. These boxes take the load off your computer or switcher if you've got an ATEM ensuring smooth streaming without taxing your CPU. Plus, they often come with built-in features like multi-bitrate streaming and direct streaming to platforms like YouTube and Twitch. It's a plug-and-play situation that's perfect for streamers looking for reliability and simplicity. The encoder I use the most is the Magewell Ultra Encode AIO. And not only can it send multiple live streams to multiple destinations, but it can also stream using protocols other than the traditional RTMP, making it my Swiss army knife for all events. But as with any method, there are drawbacks. Hardware encoders can be pricey, making them less accessible for beginners on a budget. It's also scary to trust your live event staying up to one single box, so it's never a bad idea to have a backup encoder sending a backup stream if your platform supports that. Additionally, they might lack the flexibility and customization options that you may need. For example, some encoders allow you to adjust between a constant bitrate and a variable bitrate. Others do not. Some encoders have a built-in recording capability, while others do not. So while hardware encoders provide stability and ease of use, they might not be the best fit for everyone. If you ask me, it's the ideal route to take, but if you're just starting out and you don't have a ton of budget, there are other methods that you can use. Method number two, using a USB capture device. Imagine transforming your DSLR or camcorder into a powerful live streaming tool with just a simple USB connection. That's where the USB capture devices come into play. These nifty gadgets allow you to capture high quality video from external sources and feed it directly into your computer for streaming. It's a fantastic option for streamers who already own a quality camera and want to level up their production value without breaking the bank. Some cameras have this capability built in now where you can stream using a single USB cable. But for a small price, you can grab the Elgato CamLink 4K and stream 4K video into your computer as if it were a webcam. The ATEM switchers have the same capability as do many other capture devices that I've owned like the Rode Streamer X. However, there are a few caveats to consider. USB capture devices rely heavily on your computer's processing power, so you'll need a decent rig to handle the workload. Additionally, compatibility issues can arise with certain cameras or operating systems, requiring some troubleshooting to get everything up and running smoothly. Don't expect to walk into a corporate environment and to be able to plug one of these into a computer without running into some security concerns. So while USB capture devices offer affordability and versatility, they come with their own set of technical hurdles. I've also seen users complain of capture devices overheating or simply dying completely, especially the cheaper ones on Amazon by no-name brands. Method number three, using software like OBS with a webcam. Ah, the classic setup, a trusty webcam paired with powerful streaming software like OBS, open broadcast software. This method is favored by many for its simplicity and accessibility. You'll see this as a popular option in gamers and those who are bootstrapping a live stream setup together on a budget. With just a few clicks, you can start streaming directly from your computer, so no additional hardware is required. Plus, software solutions like OBS offer a wealth of customization options, from overlays and transitions to scene switching and audio mixing. Don't get me wrong, this software is super powerful, but it's only as powerful as your computer. As with anything, there are trade-offs. While software-based streaming is budget-friendly and easy to set up, it's also reliant on your computer's resources. Lower-end systems may struggle to maintain smooth performance, especially when running CPU-intensive tasks like gaming alongside streaming. Additionally, the quality of your stream is limited by the capabilities of your webcam, which may not satisfy those seeking professional-grade production value. If you're using this method, I recommend at least getting a decent webcam like my personal favorites, the Insta360 Link or the Obsbot cameras. Both of them are powered by AI and can automatically track you as you move to keep you centered in the frame. There's also some fun gestures that you can leverage to adjust the camera shot. So which method reigns supreme? Well, 
It ultimately depends on your specific needs and preferences. If you prioritize reliability and ease of use, a hardware encoder might be your best bet. For those on a budget looking to maximize their existing equipment, a USB capture device could be the way to go. And if flexibility and customization are your top priorities, software solutions like OBS with a webcam might be the perfect fit. At the end of the day, the best method is the one that suits your streaming goals, but I'd recommend working your way up to using a hardware encoder if you're serious about streaming and ensuring that your event stays up and live for everyone to see. Happy streaming, until next time.